Hello everyone and welcome to Minehead. Uh, we are currently stood here at the monument which marks the start of the southwest coast path. I have got a week off work and I am planning to walk from Minehead uh, to uh, Westwood Ho, which is about 90 miles um, in total by the time I've got to my campsites. Um, yeah, should be interesting. Hmm, is that considered cheating? No. It's the first acorn of the trail. That indicates we are on a national trail. Just leaving Minehead behind me now. Oh, here we go. Minehead, quarter of a mile, uh, coast path, pool, 629 and three quarters. It's a little bit hazy today, but uh, across the uh, across the sea there, you can just make out whales, and then uh, over to my right, uh, well, my extreme right is Minehead. Um, I'm looking out there at the headland. That's Hinkley Point, and you can see Hinkley Point Power Station. Just uh, climbed out of Minehead, and it's a pretty harsh introduction to the coast path. It's a steep incline. Thing is, I know there's worse to come, but you know that's the first one, so it always feels a bit, a bit more of a shock to the system. Um, but yeah, up the top of the path leading out of Minehead now, walking through a wooded section. Uh, glimpses of the sea on my right hidden mostly by the steep tree covered cliffs um, but yeah glad to get that first hill out of the way um, plan the day is 10 miles aiming to end at Porlock um, got a campsite about a mile mile and a half outside of Porlock um, yeah so a fairly easy start today 10 miles um, I think my longest day, I think from memory is 18, 18 miles and that's the, uh, that's the leg where I'm going to end up in Chivana where I've got a Airbnb booked. Um, I managed to plan this trip yeah, using campsites for four nights and uh, two nights in B&Bs in the middle, um, partly so I can have a decent shower or bath um, and also so I can recharge all my electronics if I'm not able to do it in the pubs or bars or restaurants throughout the rest of the week. Um, it's not the distance that scares scares me at the minute, I'm, the distance I'm fine with, um, but this is my first multi-day hike um, and also my first uh, long distance hike with a big pack so uh, yeah that's what scares me <laughs> I said I got to the uh, top of the climb out of Minehead. I was wrong. It's only about halfway, so I've just carried on uh, coming up a steep climb, and I've just cleared the wooded uh, section behind, and I've just got to uh, my first open, open bit of the path, and uh, I've got my first view. So I'm going to show you my first view. This will be the first of hundreds on this walk. Um, but yeah, it's a nice one to start. Oh, 
we're walking up on Exmoor National Park now. I've got some Exmoor ponies beside me, which I've just shown you. And uh, yeah, the sun's come out and it is hot. I packed shorts with me, but when I left this morning, the forecast was showing a bit more cloud and possible rain this afternoon. So I've got my lightweight trousers on, which are fine for the minute, but yeah, I may have to swap a bit of a costume change midway through the day. Uh, the trail's busy. There's a, a steady stream of people. Uh, a couple of people have overtaken me. And uh, obviously that's down there. They're lighter packs, obviously. But yeah, I know there's a lot of people around. Uh, <clears throat> which is good, really. It's a nice day and everyone's enjoying the weather. The rugged coast path uh, looks to follow the coastline a little bit more closely. The traditional coast path um, goes up over the hill there um, to a beacon, I can't remember the name of it. But yeah, this is a, a bit more coastal. I think the uh, Cicerone guidebook says that, I don't know, it's about half a mile longer, a mile longer and adds about 30 minutes to your day so yeah not too much more on top of what we're already doing so yeah let's have a look that's good path uh, goes down into the valley and then zigzags up up that way this is interesting I did know that there was this choice here and obviously it's marked on the map as well but yeah I think I had already made my mind up before getting here today that this is uh yeah the way I wanted to come in fact there's several points along the southwest coast path well there's lots of points where you can have a choice of routes Woo, that was steep but good I think this way is more scenic I've got the view of Wales again in front of me now. It's a bit clearer to see from here than when we're in Minehead. I think the weather's sort of burnt off a bit of that haze. Um, yeah, view of the Wales there, I'll show you now. Talking of Wales, they're playing today in the Euros against Denmark. So I think it's four o'clock or five o'clock kickoff. So hopefully I will be uh, in Porlock by then, maybe get to the campsite, unload my uh, tent and my bag, and then maybe go and find a pub where I can watch Wales. And then of course, Tuesday, or oh, England, England, Germany. So, well, by the time you see this video, we'll already know what happened in that game. But fingers crossed, you know, we finally get get a win against against the old enemy. But uh, yeah, that's for Tuesday. Right, just. Uh, Got my first view there, looking down into Porlock. Actually, I think Porlock might be behind uh, the, the hill here, but Porlock Weir, um, which is where I'm staying. Well, I'm staying in Porlock this evening, and then I head through Porlock Weir tomorrow morning, um, and then up through the wooded cliffs there. So probably about another 40 minutes on the trail today. So I'm making good time. It is um, probably only 
was it just after lunch quarter past one now so yeah may have been walking since half past ten this morning so got plenty of time uh, to get into Portlock and have a look around uh, and find my campsite and have a shower right so now we're at the uh, point where the the rugged footpath meets the normal coastal footpath and what we're going to do now is just take a detour and take in Houston Point it's not a very big detour but it just takes in the headland uh, behind me down there um, go and look at yeah, Houston Point. We're in good time for our destination, so yeah, no rush. So I'll enjoy this scenic bit before heading down into Porlock. And there's the coast path going down to sea level, and then onto Porlock in the background. Uh, but I'm heading along this path here to Houston Point. Okay, you can see the um, shingle beach behind me of Porlock and according to the uh, Cicerone Southwest Coast Path guidebook it says since the shingle ridge was breached farmland changed to soap marsh which resulted in the death of many trees however other wildlife has flourished and this is a good bird watching area so I've just stopped here looking down on that view behind me which is absolutely incredible just going to have a little bit of trail mix now and then over to Houston Point, which is just to my left. Um, apparently there is a, an old abandoned uh, lifeboat hut there. So I'll see if I can spot that. And then we're gonna make our way down uh, to the beach at Porlock. And I think this is where um, Dean and uh, Stewie from Life on the Rocks came and had a look around on one of their videos. I keep looking back at where I've come from and looking up at the cliffs that have come up and down and up and down. And uh, it's amazing, really. It's been calculated that once you've walked the entire 630 miles of the coast path, uh, mine head to pull. Um, it's the equivalent of climbing four Mount Everests. So, yeah, there you go. If you can do the whole coast path, uh, yeah, you can tick Mount Everest off four times.
it Porlock Beach, but a sign a bit further back called it Bossington Beach. So yeah, we're just walking parallel to the beach now. It's on our right. Uh, we're close now to the campsite. I don't know, maybe 20 minutes away. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting this pack off my back. I think really, I just needed to have a, have a bit of a break, but I've pushed on, I'm nearly there now. Um, yeah, hopefully I'll be able to get my tent set up, have a shower and then find somewhere to watch the football. Right, so I've set up my tent now. I'm at Spark Hayes campsite. Uh, very good, 10 pound for the night. Um, showers, toilets, there's no kick out time in the morning. Um, so yeah, all good, all, all, I've had a shower, tent is set up, um, I've tidied up my bag a little bit and I'm going to go and find a pub and watch the Wales match. They are the outsiders, if you like, of the last 16. What do they need to do tonight to pull off a bit of a shot? Well, uh, I think Austria, if you look at the... Sorted. The Right, this is Spark Hayes campsite. That uh, headland there is Houston Point that we were at earlier. So this is where I am. Just got my towel and um, some clothes drying. Washed them in the shower before I went to the pub and I've just left them here to dry. Yeah, the towel's dry. So a bit messy inside the tent. But uh, yeah, I've come back quite early. I think I'm just gonna get in there, watch a film, have a cup of tea. I've got some milk and some chocolate in the shop on the way home. Uh, we got a water point just up by my tent. And the strangest thing about this campsite is the miniature railway line. Running up there towards the shower block and down past my tent into the next field so i'm hoping it's not working not running or else it might keep me up <laughs> right time for a cup of tea Ooh. and a little bar of chocolate cook system here which is the tokes 750 mug titanium mug and in the side there i've got a small uh, gas lighter, my stove which is the MSR Pocket Rocket 2, and a cloth inside the mug which I'd like to say it's for cleaning but it's not really, it's just to stop the uh, contents rattling around in against the uh, against the mug and I've got my little stand for some support Now the only problem about this stove is when you've got it going, it sounds like Apollo 13's taken off. It's pretty, pretty noisy. See? Probably should have put the uh, the wind the wind guard around it, but um, it wasn't very breezy. But it, it is having a bit of an effect on the flame. It'd be alright. I know for next time to stick it on. One thing to remember is with these cups, the handles do get hot um, when they're boiling, but they they cool down pretty rapidly as well. Nice cup of Yorkshire. I'll leave that to brew. Well, I've just looked at the forecast for tomorrow and it's meant to be raining all day. It's a bit <laughs> really disappointing because when I first planned this trip and booked it, uh, 
the weather forecast was for a really nice week and it's gradually got worse and worse the closer we got to uh, got to coming away. Sorry, I just got to turn the stove off. It looks like it's going to be wet. And actually, in fact, Monday uh, morning, they're saying uh, thunderstorms and there's a yellow weather warning in place. So, yeah, it might be a bit interesting for the next day, day and a half. It's looking like probably better from Tuesday, but, you know, I'll put the waterproofs on put the cover on the rucksack and hopefully it won't be as bad as they're saying but uh, yeah might make might make a slightly different day tomorrow anyway i'm gonna have another cup of coffee now and probably close the door in the tent and get some sleep um and see what tomorrow brings cheers guys <laughs> <laughs>